So let's talk, take a look at some of the laryngeal anatomy that we can see by looking around the back. So from this position here, we can see the posterior third of the tongue. Here's a, a collection of uh, lingual tissues which form part of that annular arrangement of tonsillar tissue uh, that we'd see in, say, from the back of the nasopharynx and oropharynx. And then right at the sort of base of the tongue, just here, we see the tip of the epiglottis. And we know that the tip of the epiglottis, with its folds that run laterally and downwards, known as the Aui epiglottic folds, number 31 there, are what form the opening to the larynx. So we call this the laryngeal inlet. So it's the, the, the door that leads us into um, what will be known as the larynx. The aryepiglottic folds, which run from the edges of the epiglottis, which is a, another cartilaginous structure um, of the larynx, are effectively formed by the upper border of a, another membrane, which we can't see in its entirety uh, on the model here, but a membrane known as the quadrangular membrane. So there's a, a membrane whose upper edge we're just looking onto here, which is forming that aryepiglottic fold. And it runs from the edges of the epiglottis, which would probably end about here, and uh, attaches onto another series of, of cartilages, which uh, again we can't see unless we were to, to remove some of the mucosal linings um, of this part of the um, aerodigestive tract. And that's the arytenoid cartilage. So this pyramidal shaped cartilage, which is sitting just on the back of the cricoid cartilage, uh, is our arytenoid. And we have one on this side and we have one on this side. There are a series of slightly smaller cartilages that just sit right at the top of the arytenoid, but we're going to uh, not give them any, any further consideration, but they're there. So this aryepiglottic fold runs from the edge of the epiglottis towards the arytenoid cartilage. And it's, as I've said, formed by the upper border of the quadrangular membrane. We're also going to have some muscle fibres that run within this edge as well, that when they contract, help to um, close off the laryngeal inlet, which will be important when we swallow. So we've got one aryepiglottic fold on this side and another aryepiglottic fold on that side. And collectively, that is our laryngeal inlet. Before we go into the laryngeal inlet, notice that uh, we have these fossae or slight recesses that are running um, just after the um, edges of the, of the laryngeal inlet and would be relating to the laryngopharynx. So if you imagine my hand as it's cupped on the back here is the um, constrictor muscles of the pharynx as it sits just posteriorly to the larynx, hopefully you can see that we've got these um, these recesses just, just here. Um, I'm sticking the pointer, these recesses there. Um, and these, these are the, the piriform fossae, the piriform fossae. So when food and fluid is, is taken in through the oral cavity and goes towards the oropharynx, uh, the epiglottis will uh, tip down horizontally. So at the moment it's pointing vertically and upwards, but it will be tipped down horizontally to lie in a more flat position. Um, and that will direct food or fluid around its curved edges into these piriform fossa. So food and fluid are actually directed over the surface of that, that horizontally positioned epiglottis down into these piriform fossa uh, and into uh, the laryngopharynx um, and then into the esophagus. So piriform fossa, they're just <clears throat> here. They're a feature of the laryngopharynx um, and they can be uh, a site where foreign body foreign bodies can sometimes get stuck and also if you have a cancer growing uh, in this part of the pharynx they can potentially grow to a reasonable size before they start to cause uh, the patient uh, symptoms such as uh, dysphagia or, or dinophagia so that's difficulty swallowing or painful swallowing. Another little space to point out to you is this little uh, recess that sits uh, behind the, the tip of the epiglottis uh, and the base of the tongue. Um, and, and you can actually sort of put the, the tip of the pointer into that. And that's called the, uh, the, the vellecular. Uh, and that's uh, a useful 
um, area just to be aware of because when patients are being intubated so if you imagine um, you're looking down the back of someone's oropharynx um, with them lying on their back their supine the blade of the laryngoscope there's a, a blade of the laryngoscope would sit along the shape of the tongue and the tip of that laryngoscope could fit into the fifth follicle, and that just helps to then lift the tongue uh, forward and slightly upwards and give a, a better view of the laryngeal inlet because when you're wanting to intubate a patient or put a tube into the trachea you want to have really good visualization of those vocal cords um, as you pass the tube down through the mouth through the oropharynx through the laryngeal inlet and through those vocal cords down into the into the trachea so a little vallecula is a useful space in which the tip of the laryngoscope uh, or the Macintosh blade can be placed to, to help with visualization of the of the vocal cords. So that's some important features uh, kind of around um, the uh, pharynx as it sits just behind the, uh, the, the larynx. Let's take a look a little bit further um, in, into the actual internal anatomy of, of the larynx and point out some important features. Okay, so let's take these two halves. I'm going to put this one to one side. So here we're looking onto the, the left half of the larynx and we're looking onto its inner surface. Just to orientate yourselves, this is anteriorly. That's the cut edge of the hyoid bone. Here we have the thyroid cartilage uh, and this here represents the cricoid cartilage in section. So it's got this much higher uh, part uh, posteriorly than it has in uh, an, an anteriorly. <clears throat> These are the cut uh, edges of muscles that connect the two arytenoid cartilages, uh, the left and the right arytenoid cartilages, and we call those the inter-arytenoid uh, muscles. Um, you don't need to know the, the individual names beyond that. So looking at this view, here we see that half um, of the laryngeal inlet, the aryepiglottic fold, the arytenoid cartilage and if we come in through the laryngeal inlet here we're seeing part of the epiglottis that's cut in uh, in section just there and the larynx can be described as having three regions uh, supraglottic glottic and infraglottic and they relate to the parts of the, the larynx um, as they pertain to the the true vocal cords your supraglottis, also sometimes referred to as the vestibule, relates to this upper part of the larynx as far down as the false vocal cords. So I mentioned there was a, a, a membrane that you can't directly see because it's covered over by uh, respiratory mucosa, which is what the, the lighter pink uh, colour is on this model. But I mentioned that there was a membrane whose upper border formed the aryepiglottic fold just there. And then its inferior border is what forms the false vocal cord. So if you imagine a, a sort of quadrangular shape here sitting with its upper border forming a free edge and its inferior border also forming a free edge, then that's your shape of your quadrangular membrane. But obviously it's covered over with mucosa. So the false cord here, number 27, is a infolding um, formed by that free edge and doesn't particularly play a major role in terms of uh, speech and uh, closing off the airway during swallowing. Um, certainly not as much in the way as our true vocal cords do, which is just this feature here, number 28. So the supraglottic region relates to um, effectively the boundary from the aryepiglottic fold up to the false vocal cord. <clears throat> the glottis relates to the uh, region of um, the, the true vocal cords. So remember we'd have um, a, a left vo true vocal cord, which is here, and we'd also have a right true vocal cord 
um, which is, is in, in this half of the model. Um, so obviously that would be, be it, that uh, together. Um, and the, the, the sort of plane or the level at which the true vocal cords uh, are positioned or found is, is called the glottis. And um, the gap between the two true vocal cords is called the rima glottidis. Beneath the true vocal cords, we get into a region known as the infraglottis. So that's the lower part of the larynx, which ends or um, reaches as far as that inferior boundary of the cricoid cartilage, because we know from this point onwards, we're into the trachea. So our infraglottic region is um, this lower part of the larynx up to about the, the true vocal cord. So supraglottic or supraglottis, True uh, uh, the glottis, sorry, and the infraglottic regions of the larynx, demarcated by different uh, features that we see when we view the, the larynx from a, a, an interior uh, per perspective. 